I should be charging for these. Here you go. You got it. Yep. And I have one more in my hand and a bunch on the table. You need another one? Okay. There you go. You're welcome. I'd like to welcome everybody for coming. Is, is a, can everybody hear me all right? Yes. Uh, thank you again for coming. Uh, we've waited a long time to get together for uh, a remembrance of Carol, and uh, finally uh, we were able to do something. I wanted to start my story with uh, a ball player that was around Newark in the 1940s named Larry Barra. Uh, Larry went off in the Navy in World War II and when he came back he changed his name to Yogi and he became a famous philosopher and one of the uh, lessons he taught us if you come to a fork in the road take it and I just wanted to describe several forks in our road where I think Carol had major input and turned out to be the best decision. It first started, I first met Carol in the spring of 1953 when she was attending college outside of Boston. Uh, and we dated a couple of times, but then by the spring of 1954, uh, she was dating one of my fraternity brothers named Jim. And Jim and Carol fixed me up with a, uh, Carol's roommate who was named Judy. Uh, Judy happened to have a brother named Jay and a sister named Jill, but that's another story. <laughs> anyway, uh, it got towards the summer, and uh, being budding young engineers, Jim and I sat down and we said, look, Carol lives in New Jersey about 20 miles away from where I live, and Judy lived in a suburb of Boston, and Jim was staying in Boston over the weekend, over the summer, rather, and we said, why don't we just switch? And so the next double date, I ushered Carol into the back seat and he, Jim put Judy in the front seat. And to our surprise, the girls seemed to like this idea. <laughs> and a year later, Jim married Judy and two years later, I married Carol. So it really worked out for the best. Uh, the spring of, of 56, when I was looking for a job, uh, I had an offer from Lindy Air Products in Tonawanda, New York, which I liked because it was a research project and it's kind of the same thing that I had done on my bachelor's thesis. Uh, we, I also had an offer from ESSO Research and Engineering in Elizabeth, New Jersey. So I asked Carol, where would you like to live, Elizabeth, New Jersey or Tonawanda, New York? Without any hesitation, she said, Elizabeth, New Jersey. And that kind of leads into the next story. Uh, we're off on our honeymoon, and the uh, first night we were there, the maitre d' at the hotel asked us whether we would rather sit at a table for two or a table for, for six, three, two other couples. And I was about to say a table for two because I was kind of the shy one in our couple. And Carol, before I could even speak said, we'll sit with two other couples. Well, it turned out that one of these two couples was Bob and Joanne Grote, who happened to be from Elizabeth, New Jersey. And we ended up becoming friends with Bob and Joanne Grote for the rest of our lives. And I believe uh, we ended up meeting a lot of Bob and Joanne's friends around Elizabeth who also have ended up being friends of ours for life, uh, several of whom I believe are here today, Bob and Nancy Kenny, and uh, anyway, we're, we're, it always amazed me 
how a simple decision of do you want to sit at a table for yourself or a table with two other couples can have such a long-term impact on the rest of your life. The final point, uh, when I was transferred from uh, Baton Rouge back to the uh, New York area, uh, we were looking for houses and I had picked out a very nice house in uh, Baskin Ridge. And Carol said, you know, I really want to go back to Berkeley Heights. Uh, we have friends there, we have the Broadwells that we've known, and uh, I'd, I'd much rather go back and, and Judy had started school in Berkeley Heights. So we ended up picking a uh, house on Wentworth Drive in Berkeley Heights at the very low point on the road and downhill from there. So it wasn't an ideal location, but it turned out that it was an ideal location because we met so also some very good friends for life, the Farrells, uh, the Peskins, uh, I don't, uh, several people that aren't here, the Dwarfs and the Radcliffs, Levers. Uh, anyway, it was another decision where uh, it impacted the rest of our life and in a favorable way. I got married, or we got married, right after I graduated from college. So I ended up living for 64 years and never lived a single day as a bachelor. And now I'm living as a bachelor and it's not easy and it's not fun and I really miss it. for joining us here and on Facebook. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Judy. I'm Jack and Carol's oldest, or I would like to say most mature <laughs> child. My mom would have loved being here today. She was the definition of a people person. She enjoyed nothing more than getting together with family and friends on a special occasion, a holiday, or even to just catch up over a cup of coffee. I have always admired and have attempted to emulate over the years with limited success, the ease with which she could pull together a dinner, a fabulous dinner, even at a moment's notice. The table would be set perfectly, the delicious food would all be finished at the same time, and meanwhile, she had plenty of time to converse with family and friends. To be honest, I'm not really sure how she managed to do that so seamlessly. The last 18 plus months have been difficult for everybody. I don't think anyone would take issue with that. But unfortunately for my mom, the last few months of her life during this pandemic were particularly difficult because she wasn't able to visit with people the way she so enjoyed doing so. But just like everybody else, we did the best that we could. We had my mom and dad come out on the porch and the rest of us set up chairs, socially distanced, of course, on the front porch, on the, on the sidewalk or in the front yard. We made it work just like everyone else and we managed to stay safe while catching up. So we're here today to celebrate her life, knowing that my mom's greatest pleasure would be to be here today, visiting and catching up with each and every one of us. Thank you.
So I'm, I'm Jay, uh, the next in line. Uh, Jill, Jill will, will finish up. That's the way the order of these things go, I understand, kind of oldest to youngest. Um, I, when I was thinking about the, the comments I'd, I'd make today, I was trying to think about you know, what was the most impactful things that my mother had on, on me as a, as a son. And what came to my mind, and I'm probably not the first son to say this in, in, in an occasion like this, but I think she defined family for me. Um, she, she taught me that you know, it's okay to be kind of overly attentive to children's needs and that type of thing. That's the, the, the mother she was. And, and um, uh, I, mean, I mean, literally things like, I, I can count on one hand, I think the number of times we actually had a babysitter. You know, I mean, she just didn't want to risk, if you will, you know, leaving Judy and I and, and Jill with, uh, you know, somebody else. Um, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, she, she didn't know at the time, but she was kind of preparing me for later in my life because, you know, Randy and I, my wife, you know, I think my daughters will say the number of times they had a babysitter was maybe on one hand. But, um, you know, so it was just kind of circle of life, I suppose. But anyway, I think that her desire to have that, you know, that, that protection, that, that um, you know, mothering, if you will, of a family uh, extended down to the next generation. I think the, the grandchildren in the room here probably recognize that. And I think that, it, you know, my mother um, and, 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 and the grandchildren should know that um, she really loved, you know, Judy, Jill and I, we knew it, we grew up with my mother, but even the grandchildren should know that, um, you know, they called her mom, mom. Um, really loved them and wanted to be a big influence in their life. Like Jay said, I'm the youngest, I'm Jill, and I'm also the shortest, so hopefully. <laughs> One of the things I think I got from my mom, actually, and not my father, was my stature. Um, but thank you all for coming out to celebrate. I know that those of you who know her so well, getting together and like Judy said, being together was her, absolutely her pleasure, her joy in life was having people together. And I ditto what Judy said about I can't pull off what she did seamlessly um, with groups. But one thing I was thinking about that I am grateful of is the length of time we had with my mom and that she got to see all of her grandchildren largely grow up and all but one of them graduated high school. She got to see that happen. So um, I think we, you know, and I think they got to know her really well, which is very important and not something everyone gets to do. Um, and one of the things I was thinking when I thought, it was just recently at work one day, someone said something about me being a very independent person. When I was thinking about my mom, I thought about because I was the youngest, some of the things I got to do when my dad lived in Egypt was she and I got to travel extensively all over the world, just the two of us. We would arrive pre-cell phone, pre-being able to just look up something, no, like, you know, not knowing the language, and she and I got through some pretty crazy airports and pretty crazy places because she was so independent. She would meet me there, we would go independent, and I was, I thought the other week at work when someone said that, I was like, hmm, I wonder where I got that from, and I absolutely know where I got it from. Um, she taught me so much, and that time I got to spend with her alone really was something that now I treasure even more. Um, that I did get so much time with her and learn things from her. And like Jay said, family was absolutely the most important thing to her. And I think that everyone knows that and we all um, really benefit from that. Thank you so much to all of you for uh, for sharing those special special memories uh, it really is just always um, always so moving to hear all of that uh, before our service begins let us prepare now with our prelude <laughs> 